Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Motion RC Live. I'm James, along with Alex, behind the camera, producing us. Today, we got an unboxing of another one of these awesome Hengguang tactical trucks. This time, it's the MRAP, or the, what was it, Mine Resistant uh, Ambush Protected. Uh, that's what MRAP uh, stands for, I guess. Six by six explosion proof car is what's going for. Actually, they don't make these anymore. I'm surprised. Um, I remember obviously, buddy watching news, Afghanistan war thing the last uh, decade, two decades or so. You've probably seen these. Um, I was reading stories when reading up about it, about how, you know, this truck in particular probably saved the lives of many soldiers. Um, it's just a durable beast, and I'm excited to have it here in 112 scale. There's a lot of awesome um, detail put into all these trucks. If you guys joined us, I think it was two weeks ago, we did the Hemet, and um, we just released a video on the 110 scale Humvee they got, and now it's time for the MRAP, and I'm excited for this bad boy, because just looking at the back, I mean, I'll spin the... Uh, that'll be loud, but spinning around the back and see a lot of the uh you know a lot of the features are displayed nicely on the truck there's a there's a uh a motor winch a uh, motor powered winch on there we got a 360 degree turret um again shock absorption a lot of all metal parts things of that nature um that you know again uh, justify its price point and such because it is an absolute beast for anyone interested in these types of trucks uh, they are awesome want to say what's up to some people in the chat Mike Bird what's going on uh, gaggle hello there how are you aquafish Vic what's going on Matthew Brothers how you do Matthew Brothers has been in one so if you're gonna hang out for the uh, chat Matthew Brothers um, I'd love for you to just call out some of the things that I wouldn't even know the detail uh, of of what's on them um, you know, did you drive it or were you just in it? I would love to know how one of these things drive. Uh, that would be pretty darn cool. But yeah, I'm surprised. I was surprised to see if they actually, because the Hemet, you know, reading up on that one, that thing's still in production today. Um, I wonder why this one. You know, I don't even know what is taking its place if they're no longer in production. Obviously, something they must have came up with something even better um, if they're going to take this one out of production. But uh, all around. Either way, excited to get in here. So just uh, looking at some of the things on the back, we've got, well, they got the motor parameters, but you do have a speed variator. So like the other trucks in this series, there's high, low um, transmission um, that you can uh, change to. Again, the wheels, big, large rubber tires. Um, <clears throat> we got a smoker unit in this, which is cool. Uh, high temperature protection and a voltage regulator. Um, again, a front winch that looks like it's powered by a motor, which is awesome. And then all the details, just seeing, you know, all the doors that open and close the, the way the, uh, you know, you get under the hood and such. A lot of these features are going to be, uh, pretty cool to see. So let's get right into it while I got you here. Yeah, Mike, it's big. One twelve scale. You know, I'm sure it's the way these things have been packaged. Like it's probably right up against the edge of the truck. I'm expecting to be just as big. And the box itself is not, it's not light like the other one was. They're definitely not light, which is awesome. I mean, it's a, makes it a beast. Let me bring this to the edge. Just cut off this one last piece of tape. There we go. I'm going to pop, swing this door open this way. And I should be able to slide it out. Or at least in theory, but Alex, I'm gonna ask you to grab the back of the box and just, if you could, and just you could just pull on the box as I slide this. There we go. You stay there. There we are. Anyone else hate the sound of real styrofoam? Anyone else have that uh that thing going on? I'm okay with it sometimes, and then sometimes it gives me that, like, chalkboard uh, feeling. But all right, we are just seeing if anything is taped to the side of the foam. Oh, yep. All right, on the bottom, we've got our manual and it looks like our decal sets. They tape that to the bottom. That. We can do that together. Here it is. So right underneath, looks like they got that taped up here. So anyone going to grab it, don't not look on the bottom of the box. And I'm just going to grab 
this, this. There's secrets. Here we go. Um, there we go. So that's manual and and stickers, and then oh, ooh, there's a lot of accessories. Oh, and smoke fluid. So that's cool. I can use. I have a ton of that from all the Henlong tanks and the Toro tanks we've unboxed. And here's it's a lot of a scale thing. What is this dome? Is this like a radar radar dome? Because now now they're looking at it like a, it looked big on the truck. But look how big this is just in my hand for the scale detail. That's pretty big. For just the detail of what is this? What would this be uh, considered? Somebody let me know what this is. Uh, <laughs> what part would I'm assuming it's some sort of advanced tech. It wouldn't make sense for it to not be. But it looks like we got some stairs that are going to be probably on one of the sides. You got a transmitter lanyard, a charger for the transmitter. Um, but I'm using AA batteries. I guess if you were using a different battery source. Uh, this looks like part of the machine gun. We're going to have to build the part of the turret, I would presume. Again, smoke fluid. They give you the same three, uh, three hex screws, screwdrivers, um, that the Hemet came with. A 2.5, a 2.0 millimeter, and a 1.5 millimeter. Then we've got ooh, some, some springs. And one side is fatter than the other. Five of them. That's interesting. We'll see where they go in a minute. And then some tools. We got like a lug wrench. We got a regular wrench, some zip ties, some double-sided tape, and a few screws that might be needed, and then some more and some more screws. But overall, not too bad. The HEMTT had all those like little accessory details that took took a good while for me to put together after we got off the live show that day. But uh all right, so that was the bottom. Let me see, make sure. Yep, everything's out of that compartment now. So let's flip it back on what I presume to be the top, but we'll see here in a second. And let's cut off the tape. If I remember, it was an IED device that jammed radio signals. Okay, that makes sense. What's up, Wes? Thanks for chiming in. How you doing? Uh, Duck Sauce FPV, love that name. What's going on, man? Good afternoon. Both. It's like driving a way underpowered car due to the weight. But we get to 65. Okay. All right. He got to drive it. Must feel the power, though, behind something like that diesel. But again, right, speed isn't the purpose of this thing. Just safety is the most important aspect of it. <clears throat> Taking each one of these out. That's a wrap. Oh. My smoke fluid came with me. I'm gonna cut each six pieces of tape. It's like six pieces of tape. And now I got some oh, I got some weight on that. So I'm upside down. Figures. I thought it wasn't upside down, but now we're gonna put this back. Alright, we'll take this one out. That was the transmitter, but we're good. We're gonna put this back this way and we're gonna flip it. Let's try that again. Hey, there we go. There we go. Plastic on top. Has a little cover. Oh, this thing's cool. All right, so I lied. It's not the full length, but it's still pretty big. Still pretty darn big. Silicone. Silicone in there. One of those gel pack, moisture pack, if you will. This thing is cool just looking at this area. Okay, so those springs, I think, they look like the same idea as the tanks. They come with these, uh... now of course I don't have one, come with like these metal antennas that you just put on and the ones here just happen to look like springs. But now I just want to make sure, get this out. Oh, wait, wait. oh wow, each tire individually wrapped. Wow, cool. All right, so now that's, okay, look at this. Looks like when somebody comes over to your house and they put those things on their shoes to like not make your house dirty, you know? And I'm always like, that's nice gesture. Thanks. Necessary, 
Maybe not, but cool nonetheless. So let's take some of these these off. Are they just wrapped around? No, it's like tissue paper. Yeah. Cool. That's a lot of paper on each one. I gotta do this for all of them. That's fun. Not really, but <laughs> Mr. Days tell new priors to grab an exhaust sample. <laughs> but what? Forgot the technical name for it. I'll see if it's mentioned in the uh in the manual. But I'm seeing what looks to be lights on top. It should have lights, I would presume. But just well, let's get all these. Sorry, I'm just going to try to get all this tissue paper off so one at a time. Nice detail. nice detail. It's cool looking. Now, this one I assume never had a. This was only used in like desert arenas. I never. You know, I know the the Hemet. We we have a tan version, like desert. The Humvee has a tan version and a camo version. Um, but this one only had a tan version, at least in the model. I don't know if they were ever. I've never seen one that wasn't painted in, you know, your desert tan. <clears throat> but it'd be kind of cool to see this in a, uh, in a, uh, camo scheme as well. It would be nice. The Cadillac, the Cadillac of Iraq. Sounds like a Billy Joel song. Cadillac of Iraq. Not a new banana. Here we go. Wow, there are a lot of these. I'm just trying to pull some of the, the tissue paper just wrapped around this spare tire that's on the uh, on the back side. All right, we'll get that in a sec. Turn this around. Get the other tires. Oh, what? Two okay, so two spare tires, and those are real spares. So, you know, I dig that. If you do have a tire issue, you can use one of those. They aren't just for show. Tires are really jacked. Nice and soft, too. Really cool. What's the price? Dave Webb, um, off the top of my head, I'm going to say in the 600 range. Um, might be 6 on the dot, maybe five ninety nine. dollars um, Again, just because all the features... The size, the metal, the whole chassis on these things are metal. Um, they have the torque that could actually, you know, that can pull some serious weight. Um, you know, this is a type of RC truck you definitely don't want to run yourself over, like in the ankles with. <laughs> you will not, that will not feel pleasant. I have to figure out how to get the tissue paper from behind the, uh, it's not even, it's like a waxy tissue paper. Wrap fish in or something to cook. And the last one. Ah. Oh. Let me just grab a piece of. Uh, here it is. Just want to have a piece of foam readily available in case I want to lay it on its side. So I definitely want to show you the the underneath by now. Okay, so this was saying and 360. Ooh, that might turn on a motor. 360, not just manual turn. That's cool because I can't I can't manipulate that on its own. So uh, I'm gonna presume that that's uh. So I'm then just checking out some of uh what we're looking at. All right, access, you can see dummy engine. I see where the smoker is. So it looks like that's where smoke's gonna come out here, but there's access to like a dummy, oh, whoa. a dummy engine in there, all painted up on one side. It looks completely different on the other side too. So I'll flip that around at some point. That's really cool. Time for stickers here, right? That's gonna that's gonna take a bit. There are a good amount of stickers though. We'll go get those on at some point. 
probably not going to do that live. Um, here, let me turn this around too, so you can see like the other side of the engine too. It's really cool. <clears throat> and again, like that's real, like that's like metal, you know, that's real metal in there. That's not plastic. The top is plastic. Most of the, the frame is plastic, but all the silver you're seeing around, that's real metal on the truck, which is cool. And then if we look underneath, let me just show you without even me check, taking a look first, but let's slide that over. Got it on the phone, but like, you know, all metal. Oh, I'm on the other side. There we go. But like the drive trains on these things are just, you know, beastly, all metal and then plastic encased uh, on here. But like that's metal. So this whole, uh, cylinder holding that's all metal down there how much is it weigh steve um, i'm gonna say off the the least eight to ten pounds uh just from yeah that's my uh my judgment from holding it doesn't weigh it does, does not as heavy as the hem it was but it's not as large but um really really cool i can't get this tissue paper out from behind the behind the uh spare tire yeah it's like i don't know how they wrap that in there i'm gonna have to get back there with a like a little tweezer or something to, to fully get that out <laughs> yeah they, they I, i'll figure out how to pop them off okay case there i don't want to mess anything up. i don't want to break it just trying to get some tissue paper out from under it I'm gonna make a mistake, but let's open some doors and such. Let's see what we're working with on the inside. I love that the exhaust itself. Now I'm wondering, because the smoke unit, so that's kind of cool. So actually, I don't think the smoke is gonna come out here. This is where you, this looks like where you fill up the smoke. Like there's a tube right here that you can see. I think you, you pop the smoke in there and then it runs through this real exhaust because this thing would be able to you know traverse water i presume as long as it's not in there so i'm assuming the smoke's going to be coming out of there which is really cool <clears throat> so hopefully that smoke unit you know is solid and then um what else we got so then we can move some rear view mirrors on the turret up top and there's even a portal so you get a guy in there you know 12 scale figure can fit in there for sure we got a front door oh so this there you go like this this is all metal right here it's real metal and there's got to be a way to open the door and turn the hand oh you can turn the handle you got to turn the handle like a real like the real thing nice spring loaded spring loaded handle you can get your access inside which is awesome. So you can get driver in there, passenger. The door on the right opens. The driver door opens farther than the left door because the left door ends up touching this dome that we had said is going to be right here at some point. But cool. Does the steering wheel move? All right. Steering wheel doesn't move when that turns. That's okay. Let's see what else opens on this thing. Always love the ideas of these. Oh, look at that. Real hatches. So you take this, it's like spring loaded, you pull it out and then spin it the way it wants to go. Of course, I'm doing this upside down for camera. Makes it a lot harder. There it is. Really, it's just a uh, just a little latch on the inside, plastic latch that would catch, but all these open up. That's also pretty cool. You have a store, some real ammunition in there. You got yourself a 3D printer. Print all sorts of stuff in there. What size battery, Mike Bird? I'm going to presume like the HEMTT and the uh, the Hummer, they use 5,000 2S packs. Um, will fit in there or anything, you know, anything in that similar car brick pack size. So that's the size battery. You'll be looking your your standard car battery, I guess you'd say and then let's see how the back opens up let's do that 
<clears throat> we got the door handle. Look at that. Oh man, you could you could rig it out. You got seven seats in the back. Turn that right towards to put uh shoot in. to put dudes in there. Can I go up? You're good right there, right there. Right there. All the way to the front. That's cool. How many motor? I believe it's only one motor for the uh for the drivetrain. <clears throat> we'll have to see where that is. Cause one thing about these, uh, I know that when we when I dig into the manual, it'll have the explosion, the exploded view. Like you could one hundred percent take this entire canopy off and separate it from from the truck. I know you can do that with the HEM TT. Again, that would be a lot to try to do here to see inside of it. I'm not gonna do that um, <laughs> unless unless you need to, but. Uh, yeah, you have you have access to lots. But what I am seeing on here, again, I believe this winch, and we'll have to see the winch on the front of the truck. So that it has an actual winch from what it showed on the box that this can actually be, uh, I believe this is on a motor itself. So a small little brushed motor is attached to this. So you can actually pull things in if you want. And like this whole, even this clip is metal, um, you know, solid metal. And then... Like I'm saying, I believe this, yeah, just looking at the way, I believe this is on its own motor and this can spin 360 uh, on its own. So we're gonna put the, we put the machine gun together and just finish this off up top. I assume it's a machine gun. I assume 50 cal would be on there. Or would make sense launcher. to me. We learned that off of the last one. It was well, a grenade launcher. Is it? That's what the comment said. That's what a comment said, but I think he was wrong. Okay. Really? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know. The Hummer, the top of the Hummer. I thought it was, a, I, from what I saw, it was a 50 cal machine gun. I didn't know if it was, but somebody was like, no, it's a grenade launcher. I'm like, I mean, either way, it's cool. <laughs> but I thought it was a 50 cal machine gun. I didn't. I'm like, okay, so that's where the battery goes. Look at that. How does that open? Oh, look at that. Slides right in. Slides right out. So the battery slips right in through the back door here. Uh, easy access to your battery. The battery hatch is in the floor of the, uh, of the back door itself. <clears throat> Which is cool. So if you look in there, so I just slid. So this is just a slide, slide entry. <clears throat> High roller, you were in. He used to drive one of these in Iraq in 08. Wow, yes, thank you for your service. So he would know the most. We're one of, you know, he would probably have good knowledge of uh, the Emerald. I wonder why they stopped producing them. Again, I, I've got to see what, what you know, what will replace this. Because this thing, thing seems like it did what it was intended to do. Um, don't remove the governor. I don't got any governor on here. All right, what else? Is, is it these boxes? Okay. These boxes, I'm assuming, because like the uh, the HEMTT, I found the the gas the gas tank underneath was actually where they hid the ESC and the receiver. And I'm assuming these two boxes on the side, because the only way to get access to them is with screws, is probably where they hid some of the, uh, some of the electronics. Because I see no electronics on the inside of the truck at all, which is cool. That uh, keeps it nice and clean. Does this open up too? No way. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. The front the front opens and like the engine oh. has like its own like fan. Look at that. I wonder if that's going to spin up. Does it move when the car moves? I can't move it. I wonder if that's going to move when the car is on, when the truck is on. Oh, that's going to be so awesome. September, we were hit with a fuel air bomb, all walked away. Oh, his back was broken and his skull fractured. Those trucks are tough. Man, I'm sorry to hear that. The fan will rotate when you power it up. I, I presumed as much, Bill. That's awesome. Bill is in the chat. This thing is unbelievable. Another hatch up here opens. So you can have another, another guy sticking out if you want. 
all around, man. Super cool. Let me just see for a second. I'm wondering if this is going to fit. I think you might want a thinner battery for this one than the uh, than a 5,000, looking at how that will fit. But then again, too, you know, if you're not intending on, if you're going to be driving it around, you don't really have to you know, keep the door closed. You wouldn't be able to tell. For my purposes today, just to run on the table, I'm going to leave that in here. Like it's a, it's the right fit, uh, width wise, but thickness. I think I want to try to get a thinner 2S pack. Actually, one of my boats that we just opened had some nice thin 3,000 2Ss, which would fit in there nicely. Like it just fits, but I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to get this on top with that, uh, with that hard case. So. We're gonna have to figure that out for which battery. So one thing it does not come with is its own lipo. So while it is ready to run, as you see, you pull it out, you will need batteries for both the transmitter and the truck itself. Bill says most likely made for non-hard case packs. Non-hard case packs. That makes sense. That makes sense. I thought they saw something on the roof. If you look in and up, like underneath the turret, do you see that? That's the motor. Okay. Yep. Yep, that's right. That's the motor. If you can, we can show that. But like, so I can see there's like a plastic gear yeah. that is attached to this, and that's the little motor that will spin this 360. So I'm wondering, because it's the same exact transmitter. So one thing I noticed, like with the Hemet, and then which with the Humvee, like obviously not all switches and dials are used on each one um, for different purposes. But now this one looks like. It has the most uh, the most accessories. If functions. again, most functions. If we're getting a motor on the uh, on the winch, motor on the turret, spinning engine, spinning sp spinning fan. I mean, now I just want to drive around with the door wide open like that. Like that's just really cool. And my phone is heating up in my pocket because it's opening up apps. So get out of here. All right. So let's get some batteries in the transmitter here. I got six double A's. I'm gonna pop those in now. What else we got? What's on there? Most likely made for non-hard case. It is a beautiful model, right? High high roller. Like that's what these things are really impressive. Um, you know, if you're into cars, if you're into trucks, if you're in the military and just want to have one, one thing I like about these. Um, like clearly they work as a scale model, not just, uh, an RC model, sort of like our boats, you know, like a lot of our boats, you know, the fact that you can, or the warships, you know, the fact that you could take them in the lake, it's just sort of added bonus to the fact that they just look great, you know, scale. And like, I'm sure most of us hobby guys, most hobby guys have a room full of their toys. They just want to display them. Uh, which is awesome. So, all right, power. We got power to that. I'm going to close all the doors. Unlocks. Lock it. Lock it. Let me lock all these little side compartments. We got to be ready to roll. That one's closed, closed, closed. Right. Oh, that's what I want to see. Where's the, uh, I'm just going to check around. I want to see if there's an on off switch. The other ones have an on off switch hidden somewhere. I just don't know. Is it one that, is it one that you might plug in? Oh, which did I hit? Where's the, uh, am I okay? I have my phone. I want my phone for a second. Wow. Trying to see if there is a if there is a switch that we can turn it on from.
Alex is getting into the manual here for a second. Take a peek. There we go. All right, I'm going to plug in. And maybe this, maybe it doesn't even have a switch. I assume it does, just a matter of where it is. Usually you see it pretty easily. And sometimes you don't. Three, two, one. Doesn't have a switch, or the switch is already on. All right, volume control is the same. So I'm gonna bring the volume down a bit. Got blinkers, I don't know if you hear that or see that. So if I'm turning right, you're getting the blinker sound. Turn left, you got the blinker. You've got proportional you know, the sound should be proportional with the throttle. Um, you've got honking horns. Now, what can control... Just wondering, what would control a turret? Let me turn the sound off. All right, I lowered, this, I lowered the sound completely. Is that a light, or is that... That's the steering trim. Something's happening. Something's happening. Sounds like it might be that, but I'm not sure. Did that spin? <laughs> gotta learn it. You gotta learn it. All right. There we go. Wait. There it is. So switch D does the winch. So you'd want to, you'd want to, wow, that's cool. It's cool that it's actually working. So when the switch is neutral, so it's a three position switch, when you're in the middle, it doesn't move. And then up will pull. But I would keep this taut. You'd want to keep this taut or my fear would be but that's real steel like piano wire cool. like you can definitely like that's gonna be pretty insane and then what is i don't know what oh that's probably the smoker that might be the smoker i'm not sure i'm just trying a few different Buttons here. Here, pass me the uh, pass me the manual. But obviously, being live on a table, I can't really drive this thing around too much. Um, all right, switch police light. So that's that's that. Well, I have the sounds off, so that was. That was changing the sound at one point. A horn sound is that way. Push up once in neutral to switch a kind of a warning or push again. Total of two effects. Wait, turn off, right? Well, that, that, well, that was a horn one way, but then the other way, and it's just a matter of, I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to do yet. <laughs> we'll have to figure this happened with the, with the hammer. All right, winch control is there. So where is the, I just want to see what, oh, 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 nice. Okay, so right and left on the right stick, throttle up and down, as you'd expect, and then turret traverse is just your rudder. It would be like using rudder on a plane. A little loud when no sound is on, but obviously if you have the sound on, you would be, uh, you know, it wants to move, man. It wants to go. Bill said the main on and off switch is next to the driver's seat. Next to the driver's seat. Don't pull like Ace Ventura. Head. I'm going full Ace Ventura on it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Open the door and... All right, so the switch was, it was automatically on. So now we're off. Yes, there was a switch right when you open the door, right there. Cool. 
I would have got there. I would have got there at some point. But all right, so so that's it. So we know we have three motors for sure. The winch, which is powered on switch D, um, and it's just a switch. And then um, the uh, turret traversing, which is working on your airplane rudder control, similar to that. And then, um, yeah, and then your main motor going back and forth. Then again, we got horn sounds. Now you could switch, it would be impossible to show here, but um, like the other trucks, you would hear the server, you might hear it. Do you hear that? I don't know if the I people hear, I don't know if they you hear it. I hear it, but that's the that's the there's a servo inside that's moving a pin through the transmission that can go from high torque, low torque, and neutral. So you can actually you can neutral bomb this thing. <laughs> Probably you break the servo. I wouldn't do it, but you could do you know you could drop the transmission out of your truck, um, you know like high school days if you want to, um, you know. But I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend. But that's the sound of that servo. Um, doing that so that's on switch b and um yeah then we got horn sounds what else channel five some of the channels don't do anything and in in the uh manual itself it'll just have a line says it'll it it references a channel so maybe there's there's probably open channels in the uh receiver and the multifunction control board inside that you could add extra stuff to if you wanted to um you know guys that want to make those um make it their own and uh yeah the sound of artillery shell and machine guns is there bring the sound back here we go oh so you do have an artillery shell Ooh. and then you got the machine gun oh man so i can do it's loud too that sounds good might not sound as good for you through the mic and everything, but um, it sounds really good here inside the studio. So I'm going to close this in the back for a sec. Now, what else do we got? I want to see. Let's get some of these uh, accessories on. At least the uh, we got to build up the machine gun up top. Here's my instructions. Oh, that's what I want to see. Let's see the fan. Does it move? Let's make sure it moves. I gotta see that. That's too cool. That's too cool. Let me just make sure. Moving. moving just too darn loud too darn loud but i did not see it moving but um that could be something else i've got to maybe that's on a switch too could that be possible because uh, maybe it's not fully attached to uh winch control shift gear turret turning Oh, channel 10 is the smoke switch. Where's the smoke switch? Oh, okay. Wait, that's the smoke switch. So I'd heard that. Well, I don't know. We'll have to figure out how that works as well. When the switch is pushed off, the smoke will close and start when pushed too far. Oh, that sounds like smoke here. That's a smoke right away. Smoke out the back right away. That's fast. So that's a good smoker. That reminds me of um, anybody who had purchased when we first got Henlong, and there were a lot of um, iterations of them. That smells like smoke. <laughs> it smells like, like real smoke. Um, that's not the ESC blowing up. But uh, here, I'm going to put that on so you see the smoke. But immediate. I mean, that's immediate um, coming out. So anyway, back the Henlong tanks, they had a, a certain type of smoker that they were using that um, was like a, it would have to charge up, if you will, like it would 
push and pull and push and pull and uh, eventually the smoke would produce. And then they switched it up where it's more like a vaporizer. So it's almost instantaneous and immediate and looks clearly that's the case. And if, this, if I'm filling up the smoke unit here and it's popping out here almost immediately, that's, good. that's really good. I mean, that's instantaneous. Only I will say it's on in the manual the manual shows this same transmitter, but it shows that it only has six switches down here. There's actually seven. So the one that says smog is not the uh, smoker. It's the one far to the left. They added, It's like they added an extra switch. So it's on the one that says light. But that's something you get inside, move the uh, smoker to a different position. And you get that. And what's, what's the lamp? Let's see. That's, that's the gear. Don't you love just pushing buttons? See, I just don't want to push the button that drives it off the table. Demo mode. Demo mode. That's my, that's my problem. Engine voice startup button. Steering trimming. All right. Don't see anything about there. Maybe when we're driving it around on on the road itself, it'll move. Maybe it's. Maybe it needs uh, that traction, but we shall see. But yeah, all the exploded pages, man, for like the dummy engine itself, you could take the whole thing apart inside. Um, they really give you a heck of a, a layout for how this thing is uh, put together. But what was the, what was my first reason coming? Oh, the uh, accessories. I want to get to the machine gun and get that installed on top. Wow, is that right? It's looking like maybe four or five screws take the whole top right off. All right, here we are. They very similar to the build on the Humvee one, which let's open up. Let's get, I gotta get, I gotta get a gun on this thing. Check rear drive shaft. Let's see. So that's our machine gun. Which way does that go? Does that go upside down? Oops. So this is going to go like that. Only one way that this can go on. That attaches like that. So we got ammo. Now where would that attach to? Oh, that's gonna attach to here. Funny part of it's built up. Like they show you how to build the entire gun itself, but most of it's actually already built up for you. So you just need to Think that that's gonna go like this. I'm just gonna pop that in like that for now, and then this. <laughs> Don't want to do it wrong. Don't want to do it wrong. Oh, I'm upside down. That's my problem. Whoops. Don't push it in all the way. Don't push it in all the way so that you don't mess yourself up. Like I almost did. There we go. That's going to go in like that. I'm going to push it in all the way just so I, till I know for certain. I kind of like figuring things, things out like this. Here we go. Then this fits right on top of there like a shield. How it would work? Does that look? Does that look right? Yeah, I guess it looks right. Yeah, yeah it's sort of off the top. Cool. And then, so then, if since it's on, we can get that working with the. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. The Hengwang missile launcher for the the Hemet. Um, 
what do we sell right now? We have uh we have the trailer for it. Um there's also one that isn't the dump truck variation. I believe we have we have one accessory. Maybe it's like a crane arm that goes on it. Um But again, it all depends on, you know, if they're if they're moving for sure. Uh we can get that and then maybe uh you know, ask customer service type of thing where maybe we could just put an order for a few, you know, and see how they go. I mean, I'd love to see it. Who wouldn't want to see a missile launcher on it? Uh here we go. I don't know. This? Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's That's crazy. the gun would be protected through here. And then, you know, your guys would be able to see through the bottom. That's what I'm saying. So but they, that's on the way it would they be. They have it over their head? That's, what, that's why I'm, I'm asking. Chat, tell me. Well, if you're here. Is that right, chat? Yeah, you, I'm assuming you'd have. I don't know. But it's <laughs> right. It is right. That is the way it, uh, that is the way it is shown on the front. All right, then we've got, so these were our, the springs I had mentioned. There's four of them. Well, five are included, but four of them, it looks like, oh, five of, yep, five of them get, get attached. So here they are. So we got our five, like, these would be antennae, if you will. But they go one, two, three, four, and then. Five, and they're like springy really cool that's kind of cool now i would use a little foam tack or something to glue them down if you're running through they might you know some of them are a little looser than others little foam tack on there make sure that they they would stick forever and then it's showing something maybe that's already uh on the top oh then there's this thing looks like a it doesn't tell you what it is, but maybe someone can tell me what is this supposed to be. So this this one's made of rubber. It looks like a little helicopter fan. I assume it's an antenna of some sort, but it's made of rubber, so you can sort of bend it. Got to bend it back. But I guess it would break if it wasn't. But then that's supposed to go right in there. Boom. Again, that's just made of like a a rubbery plastic. That would go there. And then we got our big dome which are we sure have we figured out what this is called yet what do you say it was anti ied yeah like a radar jammer i believe that will just press i'm not going to fully press it but once you press that in that wouldn't go anywhere i'll do that once i uh you know sit down with the stickers and then as far as the sticker sets go did we show those oh you took them out there we are just one page so that's nice and easy not going to be a lot but just uh oh wow okay so you have three op four options you could do uh navy marines army or two different versions of marines maybe it's on both but uh that's cool so you have some options to uh take but then all your little tie down little little things that go around it wouldn't have too many decals on it now, these would have been cool, like, make a World War II version where they put... Because in World War II, they would have taken... We got to paint nose art on it. <laughs> you know, they would have made some cool cool stuff on it uh, back then. And then you have your you have your steel steps. So these are actually made of metal, and they will go on the back. And it looks like those are probably the only two things you actually have to screw on. Because they provide you with a couple screws. And these are... Yeah, that's like die cast. That's metal. And they'll screw on the back uh, by the back door on the rear of the uh, of the truck. You have your, your walking steps. And then there's a spring loaded. There's actually a spring loaded clip back here, too. That's kind of cool. I'll just put that away. Yeah, spring loaded clip so you can tow from here. But yeah, this will connect somewhere back there. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm not going to mess around with the screws. Oh, okay. Is that there they are? So it was showing two, three other little couple little other detail pieces that are in here. These little black caps go on top to finish off the antennas. Um I noticed that in there. I was hoping they were in there. Cool. So they don't look so 
plane, if you will. And more for the front. Boom. And now that too, these things will slip right off. So I would 100% little CA or a little foam tack, put them on the top. Easy to take off if you need, but you're not going to lose them when driving them around if you just use a little bit of a uh, little tack glue for that. But all around, man, how cool is that? <laughs> I find this so cool. He wants to modify. Oh, you want a big Jim wants to modify the launcher with Estes rockets, bring to the field to shoot at warbirds. That's awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, I always think a potato cannon would be fun. We uh, <clears throat> we had some fun with that back in the day. Yeah, Chris, definitely getting some cool military vehicles. And Hengwang makes, they don't make many, but the ones they do make like this are just uh, really detailed. I love to see the smoker unit in this, a 360 traversing turret on this. So the MRAP, to me has the most functionality of uh of the options i re really enjoy driving the, the humvee around too that thing's a beast because it's 10 scale so it's a little bigger um bigger scale wise not not a bigger truck um than this one but all around man super cool you know like for you guys that have you know we're in the military you might have you know if this thing saved your life how do you not want to one sitting on the table with you you know what i mean that's just really cool and again I, anybody know what they replace it with because if they're not um you know if they're not making these anymore what would they put up could you put it up on your Ernst ultimate car stand so it can't drive oh i could put it up on my Ernst car stand so it doesn't drive off the table i could do that it's under here i can't pull that out at the moment but uh yeah i could get it on there for sure but all around, man, really, really cool from the rubber, rubber flaps to the lights all around. So the lights, again, you've got you got front headlights. And like the other one, they only turn on when the car is moving um, forward. But that's one thing I wish you could just turn them on on their own. For some reason, you can't, but uh, not the worst. But then again, the blinkers. So it looks like you got six lights. You got the top light. So seven, seven lights around, two in the back, four in the front, one up top. Um, and yeah, man, and you can even see through all these are like, you know, plastic see through. You can see, you know, so you can really detail this thing out um, through the inside, which is just super darn cool. I can't get over just how cool that is. Are these 12? Well, they're superhero figures. They're not going to look good, but they're about 12. I wonder if they're about 12 scale. I don't know what, you know, Batman would own one. Well, Batman would own one, right? He would have. He'd have a Batman version, but is he about 12 scale? Is that about right? He'd step up. Does that seem... Yeah, put him in the let's, let's put him in the turret. At least, you know, Ben Affleck's Batman did kill people and use machine guns, so it's cool. Not scale, but we'll get him in there. We'll get him in there. Oh, now with this thing, that makes that hard to open up. There we go. On there. Get him behind the... Get him in the turret. Does he say... Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's about right, right? That looks about the right. Oh, can his hand hold the uh, things? If you got some military fit, get some G. You know what? Because I know they make, they're redoing G.I. Joe figures at this scale. That would work. You could get some Duke, Roadblock. Do you He's in there. He's in there. It works. <laughs> it works. He's about he's about the right scale. So he's about a six and a half inch figure. Probably be about a twelve scale figure. And that works. That's pretty darn cool, man. Uh, Big Jim, man, thank you, thank you for uh for tuning in today. Wow, it's already been an hour. It's almost been an hour. That's crazy. I wish I could drive it around on uh on live stream. But guys, we're gonna take this out as soon as we can. Um, drive this around. I'd look for the video maybe next week. Uh, at some point. You know, we'll take it out and again. We're not gonna go too crazy with it. Don't wanna you know, don't wanna destroy it. But um yeah, you know, I definitely wanna drive around next to some of the other ones. Now I wish I would have had the helmet in the tan. It would have matched up, you know, with this one nice and easy. But all around, man, a really cool rendition of uh of a tactical 
you know, of an MRAP, of course, the only one I think I've, I've seen on the market. I don't even know if other companies make a similar type version. Um, but as far as I can tell from, you know, the squishiness tires from the, the drivetrain, let me get, let me get Batman out of here first. Oh, he could stay in there. I'm going to lay it back on its back again, just so you guys can see one more time, you know, underneath just looks good like it looks nice and clean under there man from the uh drive chain and just the suspensions alone like it's all shock absorbing like suspensions like i've got a you know i've got to push really hard to to get it going but you could imagine i almost wish i get a camera under here as it went over things like i wouldn't say it's a crawler you know it's not going to do what a crawler does but um you should be able to navigate some uh pretty gnarly terrain with the um with that, and I'm excited to see. I, you know, I don't want to burn out the the winch motor, but I wonder what it could pull. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wonder if it would pull. Like, if we stuck the the Hemet like it was stuck in the water or something, would that winch be able to pull that out? If you popped the one in neutral and then and then pulled it, we'll have to experiment a little bit. Maybe I'll attach a little weight to like a brick or something, or attach a string to brick, hook it over and and pull it. I wonder how many bricks we can pull with that. Again, without trying to burn out the motor. It's more for show than, you know, you're not going to use it for anything real. But the fact that you can, and that they put the thought in to, to get it in there, just adds another dynamic of realism. I guess that's one other thing I want to see. While you guys are here, you're still watching along. I'm going to open, I want to open this side door. There's, um, again, these like these side which would be under the steps i don't know i mean it doesn't look like a spot that would hold the gas i don't know what it would be in real life other than just a place for storage of equipment that's what i assume it would be but they use it i know the hem the hemet keep saying H -E I, I hard find it hard to call it the hemet i had this discussion with bill because it's h-e-m-t-t -T, so it's like hemp but they call it the hemet and I just wish they would have changed the, you know, they couldn't find anything for like an eye to get in there, if that would work. Let's see. All right, so we're using the one point, it's 1 1.5, two 1 1.5 millimeter screws, and there you go. That's where you're going to house your ESC on this side. Everything tucked in there nicely. And then while you guys check out that side then the other side i presume would have the receiver so if they can see so that's the esc on that side tucked away nicely easy ways to get to get in and out easy access if you will so that's where all the wiring so all the wiring i think just exits from each one of these compartments I like that though. Hidden away in scale detail. And yeah, oh man, look at that. You got rat's nest in there for the receiver and everything. And check that out. It's cool how they fit it all. You can see right away the. Turn it again. So ESC was on the driver's side, and then you've got the receiver on the. Uh... On the other side, you can see receiver and like it's more than just a receiver. It's like a multifunction, you know, board that has just a lot of, lot of channels to it, as you can see. But if you swap any of those, you know, if you wanted to change where things, you know, working like immediately, I want to know why, you know, I'll go in and swap from the my smog to put it on the, the one that says smog, not the one that says light. So that might have just been plugged in wrong but there's 16 channels on here and again the tra the the manual itself shows um what channels each switch on your transmitter controls so just by looking at at this where you just saw that picture of 16 um you know 16 channels you'll just be able to swap the servo leads from one channel to the next so if like channel c is mapped to channel five then 
just pull if you want if you want something on the c button if you don't want the winch on c you want something else just swap from the channel and you should have no problem as long as you stay also with the polarization you know po positive will be to the menu side negative will be to nothing side but all around man super duper cool i'm excited to get this out uh out drive it around see how it handles it seems like it's going to move it's going to boogie unscale speed i'm sure as most of these do um but then again it's proportional speed so i can lower the the trim on you could lower the trim on the throttle where when you push full throttle it won't go more than like what uh some guy said about 65 miles per hour would be their max speed um you know if you want to make sure it drives scale but now as far as like waterproof based on all the electronics being down here i would say water resistant not waterproof do not you do not want to put this in a puddle uh drive through where your tires are completely covered i would probably run through some puddles where half the tires were covered uh with water but you know definitely not waterproof you're not going through you're not going underneath just because the fake exhaust is up here doesn't mean you're going to leave the water uh you know really really easy yeah multifunction control board for sure they make repeatable mini paintball cannons for the larger a10 so, oh wow Oh, where did that conversation go? Wait, the dome antenna is the Blue Force tracker antenna, not the Duke. The Duke looks like a pole vertically mounted to the truck. Okay. I could see some, I could see doing some work on the gun, making it turn 180 and making it into a paintball cannon. <laughs> <laughs> or it almost looks like, you know, you, you could... I wonder you could probably deconstruct a Henlong tank, you know, and use the airsoft cannon in there and, you know, and get it in here somehow if you wanted to, or just go full, uh, you know, since these aren't produced, go full, uh, what do we call it? Monsterize, monsterize it. Like you probably put a turret from a tank, from a Henlong tank. It's probably the same size. You could probably mount it up here. Like now I'm looking at, You know, if you took this turret off with the airsoft cannon and just popped it here, it's about the same size as that. And then just let that turn and shoot some some paintballs, make it like, you know, a what if, uh, if you will. But that's a 16th scale tank and a smaller tank. The Stug would have been a smaller tank in real life. I think it's even smaller than the Sherman. Um, but compared to a 12th scale, a lot smaller. Man, imagine a 12th scale Abrams. Like, now that I look at this, like, in real life, I would presume an Abrams would make this look small, at least. So that would be a big tank, man. 12-scale tank. Now I want a 12-scale Abrams to go with this. That would be really cool. Um, but, guys, thank you so much um, for joining us today. I think this is where we're going to end the show. It is now 1.03 on a wednesday uh definitely stay tuned motion rc um i know wes has great video tomorrow with an exaplane he was flying so that video will be for uh tomorrow and then i got out with a speedboat that you'll see on friday uh the big storm from bancroft first time i got to get on the lake without like a warship i mean <laughs> looks we're loving that it's in speed man and we actually got a glass lake uh yesterday it wasn't so choppy last couple days we went out that's i don't have a website that i can check where I can tell if the lake, like what makes the lake choppy versus like, it's not like, you know, if I had to go to the ocean, I could, I could, I feel like there was, but I was like searching. I was like, how do I know if Lake Alatoon is choppy today for my RC adventures? But I, I couldn't find it. I don't know if it's just the wind that makes it choppy that some days, some days you go out there and it's like, you think a storm was brewing on the lake and then other days you go there and it's stagnant. And those are the days you want for that type of thing. So that video will be Friday. And then, um, uh wes is going to be on i think next week because he is going he's been going nuts you guys might have seen uh with the s with the dauntless that he unboxed last week um so he should have that almost done i believe it is almost built uh and ready to go and then he's got another one that he's probably going to unbox next week uh which is going to be fun as well so um you know just cruise along here guys content every day from motion rc and um you know, thank you so much for tuning in. So if you're interested, I think we have the link. Did we put the link? Bill got the link out there. Um, Bill's got the link. 
uh, in there for you guys. But definitely check it out if you're interested. You know, get one. They're in stock, shipping now. And uh, as you can see, super, super cool. So once we turn off this camera, I'm going to get to uh, getting all the decals on, finishing up the you know, solidifying everything, locking it down. Like I said, want to get a little bit of glue on some of these things to make sure they don't go anywhere. Um, push everything in nice and tightly. And then I might remap a few of the, you know, switches, as I had said, but all around super duper cool. So guys, thank you so much. As always, we will see you next week for sure with another live show. Enjoy the rest of your week here and uh, hit the like button on your way out the door because it helps the channel. That would be great. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you then. Bye.